Now, Stephanie, what exactly are the uh, procedures for businesses right now? Have they, in fact, do they, is there any structure, and by the way, we're gonna ignore my question, so we, but um, is there anything that the businesses need to uh, do insofar as being on top of uh, issues for the, for the state or for the county? I think at this point, the, the main thing that I would encourage businesses to do would be to monitor the Health and Human Services website in North Carolina. Um, they have information on there for businesses, um, you know, as far as any preventive measures that they could take um, for themselves and their clients. I would also encourage them to look at the governor's um, executive order that he put forth that um, bans community gatherings and events over 100 uh, people. If it's going to be less than 100 people, they actually have a checklist on there um, on the website that um, gives event organizers or uh, community groups um, a checklist of items that they can follow um, if they're going to have um, any type of gathering or event that's under 100 people. Oh, that's very good information. Okay, the other question then would be to what should individuals do uh, going forward? There's a lot of misinformation out there, so what would you suggest for individuals? For individuals, I would uh, first and foremost suggest that they get their um, news about coronavirus from two sources. That's either the Centers for D Disease Control and Prevention or the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services websites. The reason I encourage that because there's a lot of information about coronavirus that's going out on the internet, on social media, and a lot of it is untrue. Um, so I think that is first and foremost what I would encourage them to do. Um, I would also encourage them to employ preventive measures such as washing their hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. If that, and I would encourage them to do that often, as often as they possibly can. Um, if that is not available, I would encourage them to use a hand sanitizer that has at least 60% alcohol in it. Um, definitely it's important if you are sick is to stay home. If you have symptoms that might um, resemble the um, COVID-19 symptoms and you feel like you may need to be seen by your doctor, it's really, really important that you call your doctor before um, just showing up at the office. That allows your doctor to, to screen you over the phone to determine if you need to be tested. And it also allows the doctor and their staff to wear the appropriate PPE to protect themselves and other um, patients and, and to take the precautions that they've put into place. So that's something we would encourage people to do is if you're sick, to call your doctor to determine if you need to be seen or if you need to be tested. We would also encourage people to cover your cough um, or your sneeze um, with a tissue if possible. If not, the, the crook of your, your elbow will also work. Um, so to be able to do that to prevent the, the um, spread of those um, germs and also encourage people that if you are sick to stay home. Um, I know that's kind of difficult for those that may not have sick leave, but it's really important for you to not go out into public when you are sick um, so you don't, we can control the spread of any illness in Carteret County. Um, Another thing that's really important is if you're in those high-risk categories, the 65 or older, or if you have pre-existing conditions or a weakened uh, immune system, it's really important to limit as much travel as possible, um, to stay home as much as possible, and that's because those individuals are at higher risk for developing um, serious complications uh, as a result of this disease, and that's really important to be able to um, minimize their um, contact with others. And um, another piece that we would encourage people to do is if you have to be in any large crowds or be you know, in a grocery store or anything like that, to try to maintain some separation between you and the next person. Um, that, those are all ways that we can all employ very common sense, practical approaches that we can take today. There's a lot of what we don't know um, about coronavirus, but there's a lot about what we do know on how to prevent um, and, and reduce um, our chances of becoming ill. Another piece that's really important is to clean and disinfect commonly used surfaces in your home, um, if that means your cell phone, that means at your work site. So keyboards, remotes, um, doorknobs, light switches, those are all really think important 
um, you know, surfaces to make sure that you're cleaning on a regular basis. Stephanie, uh, final question. What is your schedule at the health department? Because I know that you're probably slammed with a lot of activities. What, what is your schedule and are there periodic updates that you're dealing with? Um, every day, um, including on the weekends and after hours, we have staff that are dedicated to um, checking any updates that are coming in from the state. Um, we're following up with providers that have been doing testing to make sure that they have all that they need. Um, we're following up on those results, looking into the state system to see if we have any um, positive results in Carteret County. I think it goes um, something that's important mentioning at this particular point in time as it exists today on March 16th, um, we do not have any confirmed cases in Carteret County, and so that's something that we're really um, uh, blessed to have at this point. Um, we do expect to see some cases in Carteret County in the future. We are unsure of when that will happen, um, but we're staying on top of it. We're communicating with emergency services. They're putting out press releases on the different um, county happenings and any type of um, closures or restrictions that are being put into place as far as county offices go. Um, we're continuing to up, uh, review um, and listen to any type of updates from the state and the CDC. So it's an all uh, hands on deck approach here at the health department and, and it's happening after hours and on the weekends and certainly it's happening Monday through Friday. We have you know, uh, a team that we've put together both internally at the health department and then also at the county level to be able to respond to this um, uh, potential outbreak.